Now I received a comment from one of my videos previously and uh, I thought I'd make a video about it because it's a common question. And the question is, how do you erase a memory from a memory palace? So I'm gonna go through some of the steps involved. I'm gonna go through some suggestions as well because there's multiple ways of doing it and hopefully it'll uh, help you out. So let's get started. Now, before we get into the steps, why would you want to erase a memory from a memory palace? For those that don't know what a memory palace is, uh, you can watch my videos on that. I'll link it in the description, but very briefly, a memory palace is a set of locations that you've created in your mind that you attach items to be remembered. So for example, you can have locations around your house and you set them up one by one. So for example, you could have the front door of your house and you're moving from your front door and then you can have the living room. So you might have a TV and then a couch and then a coffee table and you order these one by one. And then what you do is you add items to be remembered on those locations and how you do that is through storytelling and imagination. So very briefly, that's how Memory Palace works. Now, why would you want to erase from a memory palace? Well, the reason behind that is sometimes when people start off with memory, they've only got the one memory palace. And what happens is that when you start training more and more and more, if you put in new information on previously memorized information on a memory palace, guess what's gonna happen? They're going to conflict and you might remember what you've memorized previously instead of the latest thing that you've set aside to train your memory with and to remember. That's a big problem that happens with memory palaces is that if you don't have more than one memory palace, then what happens is that you can get confused with what's already in there. So when would you want to reuse a memory palace? Why do we want to erase in the first place? Well, the number one reason is, is if you're just remembering for a short period of time, so let's say you have a to-do list or your shopping items to remember, well, you're not gonna hold them in your long-term memory, are you? So what you wanna be able to do is you wanna be able to erase those items in your memory and put new ones in there when the time comes. That's a reason why uh, you'd want to reuse a memory palace. Other reasons why as well is that for training purposes, if you're entering competitions or if you're just general enthusiasts and want to train your memory by reusing your locations, uh, you can then train over and over and over again without having to then create a load of other locations because I know for a fact that some people just love their certain locations more than others. I know personally, I love one of my home locations that I had when I was a lot younger and I've used that a lot for my competitions that I entered earlier. I would not use other ones because this was just so powerful, I'd used it a lot. So that's one case where you'd want to reuse and erase from a location as well. So you can reuse the one that you love. So the biggest problem I mentioned earlier is that if you memorize onto your locations and if you actually do a really good job, then if you're trying to remember something new, that information that you've memorized really well can stay in there for a longer period of time because you've done such a good job. That could have a negative effect as well. We need to be able to erase those items so we can reuse that location. So how do you erase your memorized items from your locations? I'm gonna go through several points and I'll put them on the screen and just so you can take note and understand how these work as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. As I try and get to every question there is, um, I've done a massive channel, so I can answer your questions quite uh, deeply if I can. So the first thing that you can do is you can go to every location and start cleaning the location mentally. So you're going onto the location, if you've memorized something on there, picture yourself mopping up or cleaning up whatever there is and making that location uh, original again. So if you've got uh, water all over your front door or someone's thrown something all over your front door, you mop it up, clean it up, make sure the location is crystal clean and ready to reuse. That's one thing you can do. You can actually mop up and clean up every single location that you've got and then try and remember onto them and see how you go. Now, I know some people that do this. In memory competitions, I've tried it uh, and failed miserably. So, you know, you probably want to stay away from memory competitions doing this stuff. Uh, but in everyday life, 
why not give it a crack it's, it's just one thing you can do that has a chance of working for you the second option and this is something that again if you do memory training really well it can work well for you and that's making the association a lot stronger the second time around so what do i mean by that so let's say you've memorized something onto your locations and you're waiting for that to sort of die down a bit and then you, you reuse those locations you have to make sure that when you're reusing those locations again that the stories are even stronger they're more powerful because what happens is that if those stories are not stronger if that connection is weak you're not going to remember the most recent connection. You're going to remember probably the, the previous one, okay? Because the previous one might be even stronger. So that's what you have to do. You have to ensure that that second time around, you have a lot stronger associations. Now, that may or may not work for you. If you're brand new to memorization, uh, I wouldn't suggest that because you're still trying to work out what works and what doesn't work. If you're a bit more advanced, yeah, you could probably pull it off because you know what makes a better story what makes a better connection you might visualize a lot greater you might include exaggeration in there you might include deeper colors and feelings and emotions as soon as you start doing this at a deeper level then that second association you've made will override the previous one so that's the whole idea and again this is more for intermediate but again feel free to try it out and see how you go the third option and this is probably the one that i use the most is don't use your locations for a week, right? So let your location sort of die out and rest out. And this is something that not just myself, but a lot of my other colleagues and memory athletes do before a competition. Because we use so many locations and memory palaces, we don't wanna keep training on the same locations all the time. So what we'll do is we'll memorize onto them and then wait a whole week before those locations have cleared themselves up and then we'll get started on those same locations again. So waiting around, uh, say a week, maybe even four days, uh, will definitely help clear those locations. You know, not fully erase, but if you wait long enough, then they'll fully get out of there as well. And in some instances, if you've done a really good job, then you might have to wait two weeks. <laughs> now, the fourth tip here I have is a really good one because if you do this right, It'll help you every time. And the fourth tip is focusing greatly on the location. Remember the second one was making a stronger association. So the story was stronger. Fourth one is making the location stronger. So how do you do that? In one of my videos, I explain how to make a stronger association, a more powerful recall. And essentially what I did is I went through how to make that location memorable by essentially visualizing a lot better or you know, going through and touching and feeling and grabbing the sense of emotion when you're at that location how does it feel when you're at the mailbox you know what if someone put your head in the mailbox <laughs> what would that feel like so you're getting intimate with the locations and the more engaged you are then the locations are more memorable and what happens then is that the next story that you create because the location is a lot more memorable you're able to remember the most latest thing. So it's very similar to point number two, but instead of making the story memorable, the, the subject memorable, you're making the location more memorable. And look, you can only do this a number of times moving forward as well, because there's only so far you can make a location memorable. So, you know, you could probably do this two, three times at the most before you know, everything's all well memorized. So I'd probably play caution to this a bit, but that's just another scenario that I can think of for you anyway. Fifth one is really cool. And this has worked for me so often and I absolutely love it. Instead of using the same location, what you can do is you can use the same location, but just slightly change the angle. So if you're looking front on to the TV, right? Look sideways or look at the back. As soon as you change an angle on a location, what's gonna happen is it changes the whole story. It's so much easier. So therefore you don't have to create new locations. You just use the same location, but changed angle. And because you've done that, you're not using the previous location. So they're resting. So you're taking these new locations, slightly changed angle and memorizing onto them. So it becomes brand new set of locations without having to create a brand new set of locations. How awesome is that? And finally, probably the number one tip out there is just, just, just create a new location you know, create a new memory palace. You've memorized enough onto those locations. You might have a favorite, but you know what? Nothing beats creating new locations. 
And you can do that by you know walking down the street, you can visit family members' houses, and you can do this all in your head as well. You can walk down the street. Um, I've got like 300 locations walking down the street, you know, going to petrol stations and McDonald's and cafes, and uh, and I've got the order sorted out, like the customer counter, the drinks fridge, where the chips are sorted, and all that sort of stuff. So you can go in one by one and create that. No, I've, I write these in a spreadsheet, by the way. I don't try and remember them all off the top of my head. So write them down in a notepad or put them in a spreadsheet, and then go through it that way, because by creating new locations, then you, know, you can rest the other ones out and you've got more to train with as well. So you know, there you go. So in summary, the way to erase what's memorized onto your memory locations is number one, clean the location. So go in with a mop, go in with a cleaner, a Windex, whatever it is that you like cleaning with, a hose and clean that location. Make sure it's crystal clear and that it's ready for use the second time around. Number two is make a stronger association the second time around. Now, as I mentioned, this is not so much for the beginners, but if you've got a good grasp of memorizing, then this one will work for you. Number three is don't use your locations for a week, right? Maybe even two. And by leaving that location for a while, slowly you'll start to forget what's in there. Number four is similar to number two, but instead of focusing on the memorization, focus greatly on the location, right? The more you put energy and excitement and engagement into your location, the more it can override the previous stories that you have as well. So that's one way of erasing. Again, a bit more intermediate, but give it a go anyway. Number five is probably my personal favorite, is change the angle of your location. By changing an angle, you're almost like copying and pasting a new location, but it becomes brand new because you're seeing a different angle of it and the stories are different while resting the other location. So genius. And finally, just create a new location. Just go down the street or even make one up, right? I remember in a memory competition where I ran out of locations, I had nothing to do. So I just said, okay, uh, I'm gonna put number one as mouth. What came out of my mouth? Number two, I said cloud. The clouds went up into the mountains, three. Mountains went into the river, four. From the river, I went into a jungle, number five. So that's how I made up my locations. And I made up about 50 of them, just totally random and, and memorized that order, putting it into my schedule. They're the six tips that'll help you erase a memory from a memory palace. Now, I'm sure there are a ton of others as well, but this is what I can just find quickly in the short space of time that I have to make this video. Uh, if you do have more, feel free to comment down below. I mean, this is a channel that everyone benefits from. Uh, so, you know, hopefully uh, we can help each other out and grow the channel. If you do like this sort of stuff, feel free to subscribe and like the video as well as it really helps them grow. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.